Dear Mr. Brooke, thank you for joining our program today. Good morning. Hi. I know uh, you have this Inno Asia conference today and tomorrow in Hong Kong. Can you explain more about this uh, event to our audience? Yes, surely. Uh, this is our flagship event. This is the SoundSparks flagship event. It's a two-day event. We start today. Uh, and our focus is going to be on sustainable cities, sustainable energy, and sustainable transportation. Uh, particularly on the sustainable city side, we've got the Mayor of Malmo coming. Uh, Malmo is in Sweden, and it's seen as one of the best examples of sustainability um, in, the, in the world, in fact. Scandinavia has a history for being a leader in sustainability. Uh, for instance, in Malmo, 40% of their power is generated by wind farms. Uh, and this is not a small city, this is a very large city of uh, several million people. So um, uh, it's a good example. It's good for Hong Kong to compare with other major cities around the world. We've also got the former mayor of Pittsburgh coming. Uh, and Pittsburgh was a dirty iron-making city. Um, he's transformed it now into a garden city. Uh, and it's now seen again as a, one of the examples of sustainability. So. We were through case study, if you like, at the conference, through um, mayors who obviously have led their cities through change, we're going to showcase what happens elsewhere in the world. So are Kong, uh, is Hong Kong particularly bad in comparison with these overseas examples? We face different challenges. Uh, we're not bad, but we have to address this issue of quality of life. There are major issues in terms of our, the planning of our city, uh, major issues in terms of uh, transportation, pollution. Um, so uh, we can't stand still, and particularly how, if we have aspirations to be an international city, a uh, world-class city, then our environment, particularly our quality of life, must be world-class as well. But one of the uh, problems for Hong Kong is many of the pollution actually came from the Pearl Delta area, where actually they are the factory owned by the Hong Kong people <laughs> as well. So do you have any suggestion to solve this problem? Well, it has to be a joint initiative between the Guangdong authorities and Hong Kong. Uh, we can't do it alone, they can't do it alone. And already we're seeing an element of cooperation. But I think we need enhanced cooperation between the authorities. Um, uh, and if we have ba serious offenders, then obviously action needs to be taken uh, to either close, well, to either make them mitigate or, worst, or worst case, close them down. I, I don't think we can tolerate today uh, polluters who really are affecting our lives and the lives of our children. And what do you think the government should do to help protect our environment? Um, well, I think it's carrot and stick, if I may put it that way. I think there are certain things that, that should be mandatory. I mean, we're looking at energy saving, and we're looking at bringing down the use of electricity f uh, by 20%, and that's going to be as a result of mandatory measures. Uh, building owners are going to be required to introduce certain uh, techniques, if you like, which will re reduce en energy consumption. But then, at the same time, I think we should be incentivizing the developers, but also uh, the people who plan our city, people who design our city, to, to incorporate many more um, quality of life features in the, in the design of the city. The, the, the way that our city has been designed hitherto has been very piecemeal, and I think we need to look at a holistic approach, a district or a precinct approach to our planning going forward. You have been in Hong Kong for many years. Do you find that people's attitude towards uh, environmental protection changed during the times? Um, recently, we, we've seen major change. Uh, we've, we went through a fairly difficult time with the financial crisis, with the property crash and SARS. But in a way, that was, it was, in a way uh, I say this it was good for Hong Kong. It brought some focus, brought the community together. I think and as a result now, people are developing a much more of a sense of ownership, sense of belonging, and are concerned about f what will happen f in terms of the future generations. So we are building up that sense of responsibility and accountability. But we need to, again, we need to do more and we need to accelerate. Do you think we can have a greener city in five to ten years' time? I think we can with the right leadership, and uh, I say this deliberately. I think the leadership has to come from the top. I think the chief executive and the, and the ministers have got to take a very positive stance on this, particularly in terms of quality of life. It can't, it can't, the departments and the various people that are striving to um, create a greener city cannot do that without the leadership. Well, let's hope we all have a greener futures. Once again, thank you for coming to our studio today to join our program. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.